Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel, Tammy Talks here. Let's go ahead and talk Black Ink Crew, New York, Season 9, Episode 15, Black is Beautiful. If you are brand new to my channel, I do breakdowns of various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and thumbsing up the video. Alright, so this um, episode starts off with... Bay saying that the shop is getting back to normal. After Pooch came in and taught them about how to color dark skin, they um everybody seems to be back to normal. Everyone's back in a good place. Um, everyone is more excited, right? So, um, Puma comes in and says that he and Caesar have been talking, and they are decide they have decided to come and you know put together something really huge to kind of further boost the the morale of everyone in the shop. So then Sassy comes in. I said, "Oh hey, Sass. Sassy looks good. Her hair looks good. She got her front four teeth fixed. Not all of them, but she got four of them fixed." Um. That's a that's a step up, but I like Sassy. Sassy has always been one of the more level-headed people that has worked in that shop. She's one of the only women that was not ran through in that shop, that was not passed around. She, like, she, for the most part, Sassy just exudes good energy. So, we know that Sassy works, I guess, with marketing and campaigning and branding, different things like that. So, she um, is going to help Caesar with getting some things together. So, Cease wants to do a photo shoot um, and with like and get them all onto a billboard to let everybody know that Black Ink is still going strong. They used to have the Black Ink Tattoo Magazine back before they were like big, big, and they had people like Cardi in there before she became Cardi Cardi, right? So, Caesar, instead of him thinking that maybe we should just go back to that, he wants to do a billboard. A billboard. I said, oh. Okay. Tati said that it has always been her dream to be on the billboard. And because of that, she wants everybody to get in shape. And she is going to organize a boot camp. You don't need to because y'all are not going to lose weight within the like week or two that it's going to take for Sassy to get this set up. But it makes for good TV. So then we have Rock and we see him with his brother. Um, apparently both of his brothers are staying with him. His baby brother lost his job and his older brother lost his job. Rock is like, so do y'all have y'all have for the rent? Okay. Um, the younger one said that he's just going to sell some of these Jordan ones. I don't know if those were like the Travis Scott's or they were just the brown and black Jordan ones that everybody went crazy off of. But Rock does the smell test and I'm like, this is a pointless ass scene. Why are we getting the scene? Nonetheless, the older brother wants to learn how to tattoo. The older brother is giving irresponsible vibes. Like, you're the older brother, but it seems more like Rock is the more responsible brother in this entire scenario. So, Rock tells his brother, no, because it's going to be a waste of time. I tried to show you before, and you didn't take it serious. You may have had the machines and stuff, but, like, you didn't do anything with it. How many tattoos did you do? I'm not going to waste my time. So they were, we find out they were raised by a single father that raised our three boys. He died three years ago. So Rock said that he's going to step into that role of keeping the family together the way that his father would have wanted those, you know, him and his brothers to be. He said he's ready to settle down, get married, and have some kids. They, they like Crystal. We don't care. We don't care. So then we have Tati. Tati um, comes into the shop and she said that it smells in there. There's food everywhere. It's dirty. No one cleaned up after themselves. She got attitude. She said every time she talks to her lawyer, things get more and more real. Well, that's a very real and serious offense that you have, Tatiana. You are, I mean, you're being, you're, you're being hit with like felony charges for what, drug trafficking? Yeah, that's serious. That's a very serious crime. They had a whole press conference. Your name was a part of a press conference in front of the damn courthouse in New York. I would say that's a hell of a serious and real charge. Come on, Tassie. So she um she's being like real bitchy, kind of. And Puma pulls her to the side and said, what's wrong? I know Puma is sick of being everybody's um listening ear. Because I'm sick of him being everybody's listening ear. 
So Tati always does that. I can't say too much, but without saying too much, girl, the whole press conference has been on TV. We know what it is. You have a felony charge for drug trafficking. One of your cousins was trying to send some um, illegal narcotics to a P.O. box that was under, under your name. So she said that she doesn't have anyone to talk to about this. She wants to deal with everything herself. She doesn't have her family to talk to about this because she feels like a disappointment. So because she feels like a disappointment, she wants to handle this on her own. And she just kind of admits that I'm like really, really freaking out about it. She says that every time things are going good for her, someone does something to put her down. Someone. Someone. Who is this someone? Because Puma put Puma caught her out. Puma said, it's not someone. What are you doing to cause this? What, what was your part in this? And whenever somebody asks Tati that, what was your part in this? She always looks away. No one did anything to pull you down, Tati. I, I wholeheartedly believe that you told your cousin that he could send that shit to your P.O. box. How would your cousin have your P.O. box? You were a part of this. You were a willing participant in this. It's not somebody trying to pull you down. It's you looking and seeing nothing but dollar signs that would have come from y'all moving that way. That's what it really comes down to. You made this choice yourself. You chose to be irresponsible. You chose to get mixed up into this drugs and drug trafficking and do all this illegal ass type shit. No one did this to you. No one is pulling you down. You're pulling yourself down. So, while Puma is telling her this, she just kind of looks over. No, don't, girl. Look. Look straight into Puma's eyes so he can tell you what the rest of us are saying. You did this dumb shit. Ridiculous. So, Puma um, kind of tells her, you need to get your stuff together. You need to start stacking and grinding, making sure that you can pull everything together that you need to. So, in case something does go left, you are ready and prepared for it. She feels that she doesn't want to think about that. Well, girl, too damn bad. That's, that's your entire storyline, the fact, why are they not staying in? That is your entire storyline, the fact that you are trying to basically evade these felony charges. Because like Puma pointed out as well, this is not your first time with this. I don't want to hear nothing else about Tati and this, this drug mule shit she got going <laughs> at all. So Caesar does a tattoo. Okay. So then we have Teddy is in the studio listening to um, a demo of Crystal, um, one of her songs. And he's playing it for, I don't know if that guy is a producer or what, but he's playing it for this guy that he wants to work with. And Rock's horrible rapping ass comes in. Teddy is mortified, gets up, jumps up, turns it off. FaceTimes Crystal and it's like, I thought we discussed he wasn't going to be on this. Crystal says she didn't know Ted was serious about that. But she will take him off because she doesn't want him to, you know, get in the way of what opportunity she could have. And she knows that he doesn't want to get in the way of an opportunity for her. I said, okay. I mean, that song don't really sound that popping either way. But so... They are out working out at Tati's boot camp. They're on. They're doing like a cycle class. And when they're done, they um, rock and Alex asks Spider about his MRI. He said that he, they are just waiting to see if it's just a nerve that's messed up that they can kind of treat and you know manage, or if he would just really have to have this brain surgery. Um, while this is going on, Teddy once again asks Crystal, "Did you take Rock off that song yet?" And she's like, "No, I just haven't gotten around to it." This show sucks. This show sucks. It sucks. I can, I feel like I watch it out of habit now because I've been watching the past nine seasons. This show is so awful at this point. Let's continue. So then we have Sassy. Sassy has a meeting with her team, a photographer and a graphic designer. Um, Don't know what the graphic designer is going to do besides add some font to whatever we got going, but sure. So the graphic designer, um, they're meeting with Caesar about the photo shoot. Her, um, her team has great ideas. The graphic designer has the idea that maybe we can do Black is Beautiful, kind of, you know, going around everybody's body. The photographer wants to, like, really zoom in and showcase their tattoos. I'm like, great, great idea. Ted is like, great idea. Sassy agrees, awesome idea. Caesar is like, man, I don't care what y'all do. 
I'm not in the mood to do this. This is my issue with Caesar. My biggest issue with Caesar. He's a big ass baby. I I can't stand people that don't know how to separate their personal from their business. This is your business. This is your brand. So why are you sitting around acting as if you can't be bothered, which is really giving a concept about the damn photo shoot that you wanted? So Sassy asks if he has any ideas. Caesar snaps and was like, no, that's why I hired y'all. Y'all do it. Sassy was like, look, Okay, you got to have some ideas work with me. Do you want the, like, who do you want to be in the forefront? Who do you want to take the pictures of? Like, throwing out things, he gets mad and he's like, well, I don't have no beef with nobody. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. I don't know who's, you know, photogenic or not. And then he kind of just gets up and leaves. I am so sick of Caesar. <laughs> the show would honestly be better without Caesar. Without Caesar, just sit back and be the EP of this because you are really adding nothing to the show. You're really just showing how stupid you are. You're showing how ignorant you are to be real. So Spider, his wife, found out about his condition. He does not have to have surgery. He's on medication to kind of um, like control the pain. He said he's on ox something. Is it oxycodone? Is it oxycodone? You can't be on that forever. So there's going to have to be some type of procedure that happens to regulate that pain. You can't be on that forever. So then we have a photo shoot. Tati is drunk. She said that she got there early and she's had a couple glasses of Hennessy. They love Hennessy on these shows. They love drinking straight Hennessy on these shows. I too, I too enjoy a nice Hennessy and ginger beer on occasion. But the way that they like go up for Hennessy is kind of weird. So, Sassy looks completely disgusted with her. Completely disgusted with everything that's going on, right? Rock called and um, told Alex that his brother got in a bad car accident. Someone saw on the highway, six car accident that involved a truck. He's been calling his brother. His brother's not answering the phone. He only knows about it because his friends saw the accident or saw his brother's car. He said that he's been calling the hospital. The hospital's not giving him any information. He feels it's just a repeat of when his father was in the hospital and they're just waiting for him to actually get there to give him the bad news. Um, so then finally, while this is going on, because they're all waiting for Te um, Ted and, and Caesar to show up, C's is, Ted comes over to Caesar's house. Ted comes to Caesar's house. Caesar comes down super dramatic after taking 30 to 45 minutes to come. So he comes down and he said that the press conference was a violation of a restraining order. And now, because of that, Crystal is being bullied online. And that is be that's his fault. Caesar is wondering how is she being bullied. She was absolutely being cyber bullied because you did this stupid press conference. And then the people, the fans you have, the, the blindly loyal ones went and attacked her. What lawyer did Caesar use that did not know that this press conference would violate the restraining order? What is going on? What is going on? Caesar, like people were telling you this is not a good idea. You chose to do it anyways. No one has sympathy for you. You didn't do that press conference for Cheyenne. You weren't doing that to try to repair your relationship with your daughter. You did that press conference because you didn't like how people were talking about you online. It backfired. Instead of reaching out to your daughter and trying to deal with it that way, or maybe even using Teddy as a bridge to talk to Cheyenne, you did a press conference. So now he can't have any contact with Cheyenne at all. He cannot have anybody contact Cheyenne. If that happens, he gets fined. He goes to jail. He said that he has no family now. And he's lost everything. He's lost his, his why. He's lost his reason. I said, oh, okay, sis. So he said he feels alone and has no one to talk to. Ted is sitting there looking at him like, I told your dumb ass not to do it. 
Um, Ted asks if Suzette is being supportive. Caesar said he hasn't really talked to her, but he feels like she should be able to pick up when something is wrong and he shouldn't have to say something to her about it. Teddy then calls Puma to tell him Cease can't come because he has some family stuff that's going on. Uh, Tati's drunk ass takes pictures with Spider and Alex. Sassy, y'all wasted Sassy's time. But Sassy got a check for being on the show. Going back to Caesar, though. So this entire, like, Caesar's whole exchange with Ted, he's saying how all he's been trying to do is repair his relationship with his daughter. That's simply not true. You picked Suzette over your daughter. You allowed Suzette to argue with you. I'm sorry, to argue with your 15, 16 year old daughter. You allowed Suzette to disrespect your daughter, both online and I'm sure in person that entire night. The way that Suzette was talking about that little girl was completely, completely inappropriate. Calling her fat, doing all this other stuff that really shouldn't have happened. Really should not have happened. You are an adult talking to a teenager. It shouldn't have happened at all. So now Caesar is saying that people are keeping you from your daughter. You made that decision. You made that decision and not be a part of Cheyenne's life. One, when you picked Suzette over her. Two, when you did that press conference. Three, you had Suzette standing right by your side during that press conference. You haven't tried to, to contact Cheyenne. We know that because of what we have seen you say. You have said countless times that she hasn't said anything to you. You're giving her time for this. You're giving her time for that. You didn't make that determination. Your sole and sole th um, purpose and your sole goal has been to make sure that the public doesn't see you as a bad father. Nigga, we don't care. We don't care. Your daughter should know that you are not a bad father. You used to be trying to repair a relationship with her. You have not chosen to do that. Then on top of that, now this woman who has helped, you know, cause this bigger rift between you and your daughter is not even supporting you through it. But we see in the next episode, she, she has some type of health concern. So now you sitting in the hospital while she gets an MRI and now you're stressed. Caesar, get away. Go away. Let me know how y'all feel about this. Catch y'all in the next one.